everyone, how are we doing? Cool. Are you awake? Did you have your Bloody Marys already? Uh, my name is Tatiana Simonian. I'm the head of music at Twitter. Um, I'm going to tell you briefly about myself, but I'm, I'm more important, I'd like to talk to you about um, how Twitter is revolutionary for music and how it can help you. You know, we've seen stats here that artists are tweeting a lot more, and then we heard right afterwards that there's so much growth that's needed in the U.S. market, which Twitter has a large share of, right? So hopefully with some of the things I'm going to teach you today, you're going to be able to um, reach your audiences better, whether you're a festival <coughs> organizer or an, audi um, or an artist. So for my specific talk, if you want to tweet about it, there's a hashtag IMS Twitter. My handle is at Tatiana. Don't start tweets with an at sign or only my followers and your followers will see them. So be sure to put period at Tatiana if you're going to start a tweet with my name. And at Twitter Music is the channel that I run for Twitter. So quick survey, how many of you are on Twitter personally? Hands up. Okay. Of all of you, how many of you actually tweet? Raise your hands. Okay, that's a good portion, not all of you. So I don't want you to feel bad if you don't tweet. A lot of people use Twitter as an RSS feed of sorts to kind of see what's going on in their industry. Managers will use it to track artists. I hear that a lot from managers. About 40% of, I, listen, I know how you roll. Um, Actually, one of the greatest things about working at Twitter is I know a lot of the top artists in the world use their own Twitter accounts themselves, like Rihanna and Bruno Mars, Katy Perry, because I get calls from their manager when they want to change something and the artist won't hand over their password. 40% um, of the users on Twitter uh, just log in to see what's going on. Maybe no one's talking to them or asking them yet, and they don't feel the need to talk. I'm going to give you a bit about the 140 story. Does anyone know why Twitter's only 140 characters? Okay. That's a mess. That's right. So all of us live in a metropolitan cities, more or less, and so we're so used to our PDAs and we're used to connecting through so many different forms of uh, electronic communication. But when Twitter was created, they wanted it to be able to be used by anyone in the world, whether they were in Africa or Los Angeles or London. And in many developing countries, they may have cell phones and the ability to text, but they don't have the ability to get Wi-Fi. So if you take an at handle and you add a space, you're left with 140 characters in a text message. That's why anyone can participate in Twitter. Um, lastly, before I get going, I want <coughs> to do a game of sorts. Uh, one of my favorite things about Twitter is we tell our stories. You know, when you go to a show, one of the first things you see is hands going up in the air with their phones, right? So we all have our favorite memories of different EDM moments that have been meaningful to us. So I wanted to do a game with you guys with my channel, at Twitter Music. If you would tweet your favorite EDM memory with the hashtag, hashtag EDM memory. For me, it would be as simple as, um, my tweet would be, 97, Essential Music Fest, London. Massive Attack, Apex Twin, Red Snapper, 808 State, Talon Singh. That was a life-changing moment for me when I saw all those artists in one day. Um, there was the dancing teddy bears on stage with Apex. It was just an amazing moment. So tweet your favorite moment to hashtag EDM memory, and I'm going to be retweeting those from at Twitter Music, which is my channel, has almost a million followers. 50% of all users on Twitter follow at least one musician. 87% of the Billboard Top 100 are on Twitter. That number might be higher now because Beyonce joined, so it might be closer to 90%. 50% of all TV shows in the U.S. are on Twitter, and of our government, 90% of the U.S. House and Senate are on Twitter. In fact, we've done um, town hall Q&As with Vice President Joe Biden and President Barack Obama. So, the top five most followed accounts on Twitter, all musicians. The top five trends of 2011, music related. <coughs> Launched in October 2011, we started Twitter Music only six months ago. And now it has more followers than almost every, any channel on Twitter of our media channels. The media team that I'm on, our sole job is just to get more dynamic content on Twitter. It's to engage artists, to onboard artists, to help educate you guys to, so you can interact with your fans in a more meaningful way. And it's to also give our users something interesting to interact with. So, Paul earlier said that electronic dance music has now been shortened to EDM. My friend Justin Moretta from the Glitch Mob, he thinks it might have something to do with Twitter. I don't know if that's true, but I would like to think so. Um, he said that everyone started saying electronic dance music as EDM, and he thought maybe Twitter had something to do with that. I did research, and the hashtag EDM is used up to 3,000 times a day on Twitter. 
And the peak of that was only one month ago at Coachella. If the peak was only one month ago <coughs> and the numbers are growing, I think it shows how the conversation around EDM is growing very strongly in Twitter. Conversation of music and Twitter is primarily led by rock and pop, followed by pop and urban, and third is EDM. It is the fastest growing genre of music on Twitter. Now there's this idea that Twitter is just about what you had for lunch. And that's not the case at all. And here's an example of how different artists in the EDM community are using it. Armin Van Buren's talking about a new track. Skrillex is congratulating Flux Pavilion. David Guetta setting the words straight. Pete Tong is talking about what he's gonna be spinning. An edit from the Glitch Mob took a photo outside of old Grand Royal Studios in Atwater Village, Los Angeles, of an MCA um, tribute that was left by some fans. And if you read the notes, it was actually really sweet. It was people that knew the Beastie Boys back in the day. We like to say that on Twitter, we have these moments that you can't get on any other network. We call them only on Twitter. <coughs> only on Twitter, when you see Skrillex shouting out that Dead Mouse busted him at the Grammys by putting a t-shirt with his phone number on it. <laughs> he had to retire that number. And it was awesome. Skrillex was actually live tweeting from the red carpet almost the whole day. I think one of the reasons he's so popular on Twitter is because he gets it. He speaks the language of the fans. It's not marketing messages constantly being parroted out. It's a conversation with fans. It's showing them that he's actively engaged in who you are and isn't trying to just sell himself. We'll get into that later when I talk more about uh, best practices. Ty Dye was at the Ultra Music Fest in Buenos Aires and was live tweeting in front of 40,000 people just two weeks ago. So, the more important part, best practices. <coughs> I'm not, I can't express enough how important live tweeting is as well as on-air integration. Everyone from MTV to the Oscars has been using this. I'm going to queue up a video in a second. It's going to show you the power of including <laughs> live tweeting as well as on-air integration. Now, this is something that doesn't have to be just done with something that's televised. You could be hosting a festival or a concert and live streaming that and giving your audience a call to action with hashtags on air, Chiron hashtags as we see right here. That's going to create a spike of engagement on the social platform. With research that we've done with Nielsen, we've noticed a direct correlation between tweets and, more ra and higher ratings. Why is that? Because if you're live tweeting about something, Maybe not all of your audience is watching the television at that moment, or they're watching the live stream of that show at that very moment. But when they see the flurry of tweets coming up about Coachella, for instance, weekend one, almost every trend was related to Coachella, right? All of a sudden you're like, well, why are they talking about this? What's going on? Maybe I need to go turn on that live stream. Maybe I need to go turn on my TV and see what's happening. And when you combine that with artist interviews, as well as a hashtag, it creates stunning, stunning results. The MTV VMAs of 2011 had 10 million tweets. That is a staggering number. They did everything right. They included hashtags. They did call to action. You have to educate your audience to tweet. You have to educate them. Like we were saying earlier, guidance. Folks just need a simple call to action. You know in the world of e-commerce, if you say click here or buy now, you have a higher incentive to actually have sales than if you just post a link to something. <coughs> Here's an interesting moment that involved Twitter, the MTV Buzz Tracker, which was sponsored by Verizon, so that's a way to pull in brand strategies and sponsorship opportunities, and Tyler, the creator. Justin Bieber, obviously the most tweeted about celebrity, over 200,000 tweets since our red carpet opened. It's totally insane, but everyone's wondering what Gaga's gonna wear. After the meet dress last year, we started a hashtag Hashtag, what will Gaga wear? Send us your favorite tweets. And with me right now, this is going to get real interesting. Odd future will get killed all. Including Tyler the Creator, Video of the Year nominee. It's Tyler, I gotta ask. You've said some strong well, things. I'm at the bottom. You are at the bottom of the Twitter tracker. What? Well, well, all these people and I'm at the bottom. But, and you're right below Bruno Mars. I'm a, I'm a failure. How, how do you feel about being right below? Bruno Mars topped you, Tyler. Yeah, I'm a 
I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> so, Bieber's number one though, he's cool, so it's cool. So, so you got some problems with Bruno Mars, dude. Why are you cool with Bieber? I hate his music. You hate his music. Yeah, I really hate his music. You're a loving Demi Lovato guy. Who's that guy? I don't know, dude, thanks for bomb rushing our show. That's not cool. Yeah. Seriously. But Tyler, you said that you're gonna, you're gonna have some words if Bruno wins video of the year. Dude, I might kill myself. You're gonna kill yourself? Yeah. My friends are dark. My mom's here, look. Oh, look, hi, smile. Mama Tyler, the creator. <laughs> All right, you guys, tons more on the VMA black carpet coming your way, and you do not want to miss Gaga's opening performance. See you soon. Thanks, Tyler Greener. I appreciate that. Making friends, Tyler the Creator. So when he did that on-air call to action, we saw a spike up to 7,500 tweets for what would Gaga wear. And then if you notice throughout the VMAs, we see spikes whenever noticeable things happen during the show. Beyonce's baby rub, I think you might have heard some stats around it, it pretty much almost broke Twitter. No, just kidding. But there was over 120,000 tweets that were uh, tweeted during that moment. So if you combine <coughs> on-air integration or interesting moments at live festivals, if you're a festival organizer, absolutely encourage your audience to be tweeting. They need simple encouragement. One of the things I've done in LA is worked with K-Rock, which is a very powerful rock radio station, to educate their audiences when they do live shows. So if you go to a show at K-Rock, you'll see huge signs that will say, now trending, hashtag K-Rock Xmas, and then the at handles of everyone performing. A lot of artists have at handles that you can't guess right away. For instance, Lil Wayne is at Lil Tunji. Well, not everyone at the show is gonna know that. Probably a lot of your fans are just gonna be tweeting at Lil Wayne. So on any merchandising, on any signage, on any websites, you can do liner notes, you can Chiron videos. Make sure that you're blasting out whatever your at handle is, as well as your hashtag. I've seen artists use it on their gear. We've seen um, Formula One racers use it on helmets. In the US, different sporting um, societies are using it on the field and on games. So one of the questions I get asked the most how do I get more followers? I think everyone wants to know that. The first thing to know is that you are the <coughs> concierge. Your Twitter channel is your music editorial outlet. If you give your followers the world, the world will give you followers. It's not the other way around. I think that when people start doing music, it comes from a place of wanting to express themselves, and you're just hoping someone will like what you do. I'm a musician myself, I've played keys 27 years. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I have a triton, and I like to sequence, I'm a nerd, and I sing as well, right? So in the beginning of being an artist, you're just so excited about what you do, you hope you'll have any fans whatsoever. And then you start to get a little bit of fame, and all of a sudden it's like, how do I get more? More, 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 more. More money, more fans, more this, more that, and you lose the passion for what you're actually doing. The artists that get it right on Twitter are the artists that understand that it's a two-way conversation. It's you creating a conversation with your fans so they feel a part of your family. Artists like Skrillex, Dead Mouse, The Glitch Mob, they understand this. And that's why they have highly engaged user bases. One of the first ways to do this is use your voice. If you're an artist and you're having management run your Twitter account, you're losing a great opportunity. We've noticed that when artists take over their accounts from their management, their account follower increase was like this. Because fans want to talk to you. I think one of the reasons Twitter's revolutionary is because never before in the history of music have you been able to talk to your favorite artists. When I was a kid growing up, if I loved <coughs> Morrissey, Depeche Mode, I would never get to talk to them. If I'm lucky, maybe I would get to do a meet and greet. And then they'd forget about me and never hear from me again. On Twitter, I can tweet to Diplo and he'll tweet me back, which I have. And, uh, and I, they don't, I get so excited and I work for Twitter. You know, one of the stories I always joke about is I was at an awards show and Gavin Rossdale was walking by me and took off his shirt and I was like, whoa! And I tweeted about it and the next day he tweeted me back and said, glad your day is looking up. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was so embarrassed and I was excited and I'm a kid who works in music in Los Angeles and is surrounded by artists. How much more meaningful is it for that kid who's you know, the son of a factory worker in a town of 300 and thinks no one ever listens to him, who has no hopes, no plans of doing anything? Artists have a tremendous opportunity, and something as simple as an app reply can inspire someone. If you're in a band, 
Use all the other artists in your band's at handles in the bio so that your fans know how to find the other members. Um, Glitch Mob do this, Foster the People do this, Grizzly Bear, other artists like that. At reply your fans, include photos you want to stagger your media. Across the board, whether you're looking at Twitter, Facebook, or anything at all, uh, photos always have such a huge reach. However, include some plain tweets for those folks that are only on text message. Plain tweets can be just as powerful as photo tweets. Videos as well are really dynamic, but they don't have as high of an engagement rate as photos and plain tweets. Twitter source your world. I love the idea of Twitter sourcing. Artist Amanda Palmer, <coughs> at Amanda Palmer, is fantastic at this. She'll be going to play a show and she'll say, hey, I need a green secret dress here in Edinburgh. If anyone has one, bring me one. One tweet. And like an hour later, fans will show up with that. Those simple games have such a profound impact on fans and allow them to be a part of your world in a more meaningful way. Engage with other artists on Twitter. We notice that there's spikes in activity when one verified account tweets to another verified account because fans feel like they're being led in on a conversation. When Kanye West tweets to Justin Bieber, you feel like you're sitting in on a conversation that you normally would not norm uh, be able to experience. For music embeds, we allow YouTube, RDO, Amazon MP3, and iTunes. I think there'll be some more exciting things to talk about music-wise in the future. I can't get into that right now, but keep your eyes open. And like I said before, promote your handle and your hashtag. <laughs> Twitter interviews. So this is something really easy that you can do to promote anything. And the, effect, the effects on an account is ginormous. Eminem's artist Yellow Wolf on his label released Radioactive and M did an interview with him where he asked him 10 questions back and forth. The first question alone got thousands and thousands of retweets. And in an interview on Sirius Radio, Yellow Wolf said that that one interview with Eminem did more to promote his album than any of the press he did. All due respect to the press. I was a journalist for many years. But I think why is that so powerful? It's because Twitter is worldwide. It's not relegated to one major market. Fans anywhere in the world can see that. And then you can go on a site like Storify and create a document like this and then send it out as a press release. Press release. Tom Petty did a live Q&A with fans. And when I started looking at the questions that were coming in, I noticed that there were actually fans joining Twitter just to ask Tom Petty a question. In the EDM world, Paul Van Dyke recently did our first bilingual chat ever with his fans. So Paul, Paul Van Dyke kind of broke Twitter ground with that. He took questions in both German and English and tweeted back and forth with fans. Tie-dye live tweeted UMF Buenos Aires, like I said, Skrillex live tweeted the red carpet. And then I had a bunch of different artists live tweeting the Grammys from their couch. They weren't even there. They were just watching and live tweeting it. And those artists saw you get an average increase in daily follower rate for live tweeting of up to four times. So if you normally gain about 20 followers a day, if you're actively live tweeting, that number goes up to 80. During the Grammys, there was an artist that gained 200 followers a day. In the two hours she live tweeted the Grammys, she got 2,000. The average increase in your retweet weight rate is a minimum of two times. If you're actively live tweeting, that can go up to 32 times. Verified artists gain higher than four time follower increase when they do the following. Live tweeting is more, four, more than four tweets per hour, but less than 15. Tweet verified artists to verified artists. And color your commentary. Anyone can say, yay, Adele won. It's not so easy to say things like um, Annie from St. Vincent at the Grammys when Paul McCartney did his last number where there was all these famous guitarists on stage. She tweeted, would everyone with a guitar please come to the stage now? Hashtag Grammys. That was an interesting and funny statement that only she could make because that was her point of view. Fans want to hear your point of view, whatever makes you uniquely you. <coughs> when we do best practice meetings, this is the, the spike that we see. Followers increase is going along steadily, and then all of a sudden we see a spike. That's for Jimmy Kimmel and American Idol. That is the link that will give you all the goods that you want right there. Media.twitter.com has our best practices for musicians there. There's also the best practices for hashtags. It'll get into Twitter interviews, Twitter sourcing, how to advertise your fans effectively. The power of Twitter. Amanda Palmer recently started a Kickstarter campaign, posted a tweet about it. She raised half a million dollars for her album. There's a band called Starflyer 59 out of Los Angeles who have mm, 
less than 600 followers, with one tweet and a Kickstarter campaign, they raised $10,000 in eight hours. Chad Ochocinco is a football player in the US who posted a tweet. He said, hey fans, I'm inviting you to dinner tonight. Sylvia's in New York. And about 100 fans to stay dinner. Tom Petty used Twitter to find stolen gear recently. Wally Gonum, on January 25th, when he was released in Egypt, started, he used Twitter to announce Twitter, the Egyptian Revolution. One of my favorite stories, his handle's Puto Danny, which is a little interesting, but um, Twitter can be used to reunite people with their family. I'll wrap up with this. Danny Morales is a man in New York who is homeless, and through an organization called Underheard New York that gives the homeless people prepaid tel uh, telephones, he decided to look for his daughter. He posted one tweet, my daughter, her name is Sarah M. Rivera, and said that he was looking for her. <coughs> Less than two days later, he was reunited with his daughter of 11 years and met his two grandchildren for the first time. Twitter is the best free press, and the tool is in your hands. It's just about what you're going to do with it. Use media.twitter.com. I'm your concierge to help you do whatever you want to do. The power is yours. The question is what's next. Thank you.